now before going into the details on the compression technique let me give you certain uh, statistical properties of the text which can actually predict some very nice nature regarding the data so given a data can we predict how the data is actually growing so given say 100000 document we are reading say one by one of first document second document third document then can we predict how the document or how the vocabulary is growing is it varying across language that is if the data is changed from say english to bengali or english to any other language say german will we be looking i mean we will be observe will we be observing different uh, phenomena or will we be observing something similar if we also change the modality such as if we change the data from the news data to say web data or say some other type of say tweet data or microblog data will we be observing something different or if we change the genre such as say let's consider we uh, let us consider in a data there are news articles later on we considered another collection containing say uh, say stories so let's consider all the stories written by william shakespeare across genre will we be observing different uh, i mean um, uh, take out messages so for this statistical property i mean to observe this statistical properties of data we will be referring to a data set uh, of i mean uh, given by imdb which is internet movie database which is containing more than uh, 200 uh, 230000 documents that is 230000 more than 230000 movies information are there particularly the movie name the plot description and the list of artists and their roles are stored as the terms and basically there are to more than 230000 documents or film information stored in this database now if we tokenize the entire collection and we if we sort the data based on the frequency if we sort the tokens or if we sort the terms in the vocabulary by the frequency we will be observing something like this ga will be having the highest frequency next is a then and to of in and so on and if we put a rank based on the frequency these will be the ranks rank 1 which is the highest uh, or the term having the highest collection frequency note that these are the collection frequency that is the total number of term the total number of times this term is occurring in the entire vocabulary or entire collection so cf of the is basically 1586358 cf of say movie is basically 2411551 now note that here some terms are stop words but some terms are not stop words as such such as this this is not a stop word we know here is also not a stop word but note that in the imdb database all the almost all the documents will be having the year information like when the movie is released so here we are observing one thing which is actually a a, a data or a, or an information which is not actually containing any useful signal it is actually dependent on the data set in which we are performing this kind of we are actually calculating this kind of statistical counts so in general year is not a stop word but for a data such as imdb database we are we are observing that year is having a very high frequency which indicates that it is not on, i mean carrying any discriminating factor to discriminate a relevant document from a non relevant document in sum this term in this database is actually not that much useful this is an unimportant term in this database or in this data set similar to the all the 
other stock words similarly character artist movie these are not actually uh, stop words in english but as we are using an imdb database they are actually occurring in almost all the documents that's why they can be considered as a set of stop words now if we plot the data or the or the terms where in the x axis if we plot the rank like this so if we plot the rank in the x axis and the frequency in the y axis we will be observing something like this now what is this this is basically sorted by the rank so rank 1 as we have seen the the is having the highest frequency here then the second term a second highest frequent term a which might be occurring here then the third term then the fourth term so basically from this plot we can observe that some terms are very frequent right and at the bottom some terms are very rare this is a phenomena which is true for all types of data all genre and all modalities of data sets considering this or observing this uh, a researcher named zip actually had given a law had proposed a law so the law is if we uh, basically uh, if we rank all the terms in the in the in, in a collection based on the frequency of that term then the term frequency decreases rapidly as a function of the rank of the term in sum or mathematically if we uh, put the zips law uh, in in a, in a mathematical form it would look like this ft which is basically the frequency of the term so it is basically the collection frequency the collection frequency of the term will be some constant by the rank of the term right now this constant will be specific to certain collections now again coming back to the definition term frequency decreases rapidly as function of rank so if we consider the frequency of say, the, the having say so if we consider the term frequency of the say uh, say p which is 1586358 just to avoid writing this large value i am writing p here so if i consider so basically the collection frequency of the is p now here what it is saying is p will be some constant by the rank now we know the rank of the is 1 so essentially it will be a factor of the basically this constant will be a factor of the frequency of the term and it will be basically dependent on the collection now if we go on like if we increase so the next term the the, the next most frequent term is a the rank is 2 so this will be actually true for cf of a for this as well now this k will be a constant based on the collection now this can actually be put in more uh, detail i mean or in in more formally using this so the formula was this ft equals to k by rt now if i put what one one by n in both sides where n is basically the total number of terms in the in the in the collection so what is this so ft by n is basically the maximum likelihood estimate of the term t 
in the collection again i am repeating n is the total number of terms in the collection if i if this is the collection n is the total number of words in the collection and out of them this is the total number of t in the collection let's say this so this is essentially if i consider this as as an arn and if i make some uh, i mean uh, draw some terms out of this arn what is the likelihood that i will be seeing a t this is basically that maximum likelihood estimate of t this part and here this part this can actually be taken together which will be again a constant uh, considering the n as constant for all the terms of course essentially this c where c is basically k by n is considered 0.1 for english now what does it mean considering c as 0.1 in english it means that the most frequent term accounts for 10% of the text how the most frequent term will be having the rank the rank will be 1 right so p of t will be what only c which is 0.1 so if i consider this is a, the this is the maximum maximum likelihood estimate which is the probability that means 10% of the text in the entire vocabulary is taken by the most frequent term similarly for the second most frequent term it will be 5% considering rt as 2 you can do the math and it will be go on like this now to visualize the zips law if we it's it's easier to visualize if we put a log in both sides so if we put a log in the left hand side as well as in the right hand side it will be look like this now if this zips law is actually holding in a in a collection we should be seeing a plot with x axis as uh, sorry x axis as the uh, log of the rank and y axis as the frequency it will be a straight line with a slope of minus 1 so basically this will be the x or the rank this will be the y or the frequency we should be seeing a plot like this so if we put the i mean if, if we visualize the zips law or the distribution of the term term frequencies based on the ranks on this imdb data set we will be looking at uh, we will be actually observing a plot like this note that in the x axis it is log of rank earlier it was the raw rank it was the raw rank it was the raw frequency now it is the log of rank and log of frequency that's why instead of getting a plot like this we are getting a plot like this earlier the plot that i have shown you earlier was a plot like this now after putting this log it is actually becoming like this now this is as we as i have said this is true for all types of data as well this is for the imdb data set and this is for the bible if you have a large enough data set you will be observing a similar kind of a trend like a plot with slope roughly minus 1 will be observed for any type of data so it is also true for other languages as well like if we plot some other language such as say bangla or say french or german we will be observing a similar trend now what this zips law is actually implicating us so it implicates that the most descriptive terms uh, are those terms that are not appearing in every document so basically from this plot we can actually discard these terms having high uh, occurrence which actually means that they are actually occurring very frequently 
and they do not actually possess any discriminating factor again to discriminate a document from being relevant to being non relevant note that our ultimate target is to represent or to store a very good representation of the document such that given a query we can discriminate a relevant document from a non relevant one so that we can only select the relevant documents in the top ranks so this is the main motive of information retrieval now if we are ending up with a set of terms which are very common which are almost always occurring in all the documents in the collection they are then they are basically the common terms the stop words so we can simply exclude them uh, basically they are not actually descriptive that's why we can actually exclude them and uh, zips law is a way to actually automatically identify those non descriptive terms note that in a static uh, stop word list we will not be getting these terms but we can un understand that these terms are actually stop words for this data set and by stop word i am meaning some terms which are non descriptive they are not actually having the power to discriminate a relevant document from a non relevant one so this is the implication of a zips of the zips law so also it also helps to compress the data how because if these terms as they are actually occurring in many documents their posting list will be very large right so we can actually exclude them if we exclude them this much memory will be saved uh but these are actually sometimes can be important like in a proximity operator what is the proximity operator uh, we will be looking at them later on uh an alternative is to leave them in the index but remove them from the query if it is not occurring in a proximity operator if it is occurring in a proximity operator we will be uh, basically keeping that to uh, observe or to perform the retrieval now this zips law is also true for on the queries that we actually apply uh, or submit to a retrieval model or a search system this is a similar plot that was uh, uh, i mean uh, recorded in the aol search system aol was a search system earlier i think it is discontinued now it is not actually not not that much popular so what they have done they have basically uh, kept all the queries in the query log that basically the users of the aol search system is submitting into the system and by the frequency so they first sort the queries based on their frequency and they have put a rank so rank 1 the most frequent query most frequent query rank 2 is the next frequent query and so on and so on and if we make a plot like this it will be looking like this again from this what we can observe that some queries that we submit to the search system are very common that is we regularly search with those uh, those queries such as this this actually depends on the time or on the uh, Uh, or, or from the place where you are actually performing the search as well like if you were in uh, say india uh, and uh, if you were uh, i mean uh, say if you were uh, standing i mean if you were considering the aol or the or the queries that are sub getting submitted into a search system in say 2019 uh, during april may in india you will be getting a large number of queries based on the election of india so because at that time the election was uh, held so a large number of people were actually searching with different aspects of elections in india 
so they will be actually taking up the top position in this kind of a zips law plot and the rare ones are basically some rare queries that some people will be or some people actually submit to the system but the general trend will be the same having a plot with slope minus 1 if we make a plot like this so from this we can actually utilize certain i mean from this observation we can utilize uh, this information to make the systems work better like we can tweak to do uh, i mean uh, we can tweak the system to do well for this we can actually keep the results of these queries into a cache memory so that they can be actually answered pretty quickly this kind of a uh, uh, tweaks can be performed by the retrieval model uh, now a simple question given the zips law as a collection grows how will the size of the vocabulary grows i have said that if i keep on adding new data into the system the 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 frequency of the terms will be like this like right so basically this will be the highest frequent term so this will be continuing like this but how will the size of the entire vocabulary will be growing so to address that we have another law called heaps law but before that if we just want to perform a zips law in a set of data we can simply perform an operation like this so let me just show you this uh, in a in a simple collection let me just open the slide for you first uh, so that i can just copy it and here you can see we i have the uh, this shelton.txt although it's a very small file but let's try it let's try the uh, let's try to see how this will be actually looking like you can see there are 49 blank spaces 26 the 20 of 14 and and so on and at the bottom you will be seeing some actual informative terms like study summarize summarization specificity similarity so they are very rare actually occurring only once in the document but they are actually very useful now if we apply the same zips law plotting on a bigger data set like, such as this gutenberg data set how it will be looking like it will take some time you can see there are uh, specifically 2 million uh, actually 2.5 million spaces blank space 32500 the 169000 and 168000 of and so on these are the so if we so they, they are basically the first column is basically the frequency and they are basically ranked so this is the rank 1 space we can ignore it in that case it will be rank 1 rank 2 and if we perform a plotting with any packets such as say matplotlib we will be observing a plot like this that we have observed already now one thing to observe is for rare terms it actually fits pretty bad now there are certain uh, uh, extension of zips law to address the rare terms as well but we will not be discussing that in this class now as i said can we observe the increase in the vocabulary size as well there is a rule called there is another law called heaps law which states that the number of new records decreases as the size of the corpus increases which means as soon as, I mean, as long as the corpus is increasing in size the chance of new words being added to the vocabulary will be decreasing we can understand that if we read one document 
we have already definitely have encountered the a some other terms in the second document again these terms are again occurring but they are already included in the vocabulary so vocabulary is not uh, being increased so the chance of observing uh, an entirely new term is actually will be decreasing with the increase in the size of the vocabulary mathematically it looks like this where v is the size of the vocabulary which is basically the number of unique terms n is the size of the corpus that is number of all terms n is much much greater than v uh, and k is a constant there are two constants k and beta right now it's easier for us to understand this with a plot so the plot would look like this if we plot the hips law on the same imdb data set here in the x axis we are plotting the term occurrence that is the count and here basically the size of the vocabulary so first we can see the vocabulary size start from zero it is increasing at a rapid speed and after certain time it is actually the speed has become i mean after say this portion the slope has become less uh, i mean less uh, less prominent and by the end if we keep on growing the vocabulary at some time it will be almost uh i mean parallel to the x axis but it will never be exactly parallel to the x axis why because new terms will be added every now and then because of some gibberish said by some random people or by some uh, or, or or some uh, newly added say terms in the vocabulary or newly formed terms like say coinage coinage is a new term which was introduced i think some 6 or 8 months back into the vocabulary so this type this kind of a term will be added frequently also there are possibilities of spelling mistakes so based on the spelling mistakes i guess this is a spelling mistake done by the ex uh, um, uh, president of us uh, again i mean people will be actually par i mean uh, having this kind of an issue of making spelling mistakes which will be actually causing new terms to to be added into the vocabulary also new email ids and so on there are so many new things which will be added frequently which will be causing the uh, the 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 size of the vocabulary to grow but very slow rate now given a corpus and a new set of data the number of new index terms will depend on the size of the corpus this is one implication from the hips law given a, a corpus let's say this corpus is already indexed and a new set of data this new set of data we need to add in this index the number of new terms new index terms so these terms say w's or words which will be added into this existing index will depend on the size of the corpus if this corpus is quite large the number of new terms that will be added will be quite less if it is small it will be the number of new words that are, that are being that will be being added uh, will be added to this index will be much large so if the corpus is if the corpus is small uh, there are chances uh, i mean high number i mean more number of new words will be added if the corpus size is uh, quite large the new number of i mean new words will be added but with a slow rate so it is also true for controlled vocabulary as well uh because every now and then new concepts will be arriving into the picture and they needs to be added to the controlled vocabulary